The following is a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. For more information, please visit our website at dallasgenealogy.com. So today we're going to talk about pedigree charts and just pedigree charts. Um, Family Tree Maker does have some really good um, tree charts. Um, the reports, not so much. Um, every software has its idiosyncrasies. Um, and because of that, um, next month I'm going to go over ch how to use Charting Companion, which is a separate piece of software. It's not really expensive. That will talk to the Family Tree Maker database and has a bunch of really cool um, charts and reports that you can utilize. And, this is from Family Tree Makers Publish tab uh, workspace. Um, you have two tabs, collection and detail. And we're you gonna look at just the charts or just pedigree charts. Now, a lot of them have the same criteria so you can apply whatever I tell you today to a lot of these charts. However, be aware that there are certain ones of these charts that they've done something wrong in the algorithms because they don't look like the images here. And I can't remember which one it is, um, but I think it may be the fan chart. This spacing, instead of being three inches, is like three feet. So there's no way you can print that. And I reported it once and they said, well, it has to be that far apart for the thing. And I'm like going, not that big. Uh, because in some things they do, in some programs they do work correctly. And the fan chart is one of the neater charts to use. So, anyway, pedigree charts are usually what people want to look at um, to see their lineage or a cousin's lineage or whatever. So, that's why I'm going to do only pedigree charts today. Also, it's the easiest one or one of the easier ones to put in a book format. That and the ancestor chart, wherever it is. Um, actually, I do not see an ancestor chart anymore. Anyway, create a chart. It will take it, depending upon what you're, you've defaulted to, uh, a while to generate maybe but you have a bunch of options in these. Over on the right-hand side are all your options. This is a pedigree chart for Viola May's house, but you can rename this anything you want just by highlighting it and retyping it. I do have this set up in a book format. If you do it as a poster, it will tell you the chart size and how many pages it's going to take. If you, if it gets big enough and you want to take it to um, a Kinko's or something to print the big chart, you can save it as a one page PDF and it will put them all together as one big image. Um, I have a printer that will print this, but I have to set up the printer and open the software after this, the printer has been set up and that size selected in order for it to show up here or it won't format it correctly for me to be able to print it. But one of the reasons I like using book is because when you go to family reunions, you can put an index at the end of this thing and people can find themselves easier. So be aware that there are some advantages to doing book versus charts. I mean, the charts look really cool and people can have fun doing them. Just be aware that if you're doing a descendant report and you have like six generations, or I mean a descendant chart, and you have like, six generations and 
you have followed all the kids of all the kids of all the kids of all the kids. That chart is going to be less than two feet tall. And it may be 200 feet long. So you have to be <laughs> aware of those things when you start setting up your uh, options. You may want it to be a book. If it's a book, you don't really need to do a lot of stuff with this part up here. Um, usually you say no overlap. You want it squished. You want the nodes aligned on top. This is how many generations per page. Um, if you want a background, you do have the option of finding a picture that you want to put in the background. And you do that to browse for an image, it's gonna open a window and you find one. Um, there are defaults within Family Tree Maker. They have some pretty cool ones. Um, you know, and if you do that, it will show up in the background. And one of the things you do is tell it how transparent you want it to be. And usually, oops, wrong way. No, that is the right way. I want it. You don't want it, I think 80, you don't want it real dark because that distracts from your um, boxes of information. I have a family home on one of my families that was built in 1698. I have used that home as a backdrop on the trees of that family but I really mute it down because it's it can it it's distracting from the words. That's why I tend not to do a background. You can tell it if you want pictures or not. So like there's a thumbnail on this one. You can tell it where you want it placed and the size of it. You can also tell the software to use silhouettes, which if you do, it's going to fill in silhouettes, men, women. Just remember that if you do that, it's going to take a lot of ink to print. You also have the option to include empty branches. There again, I don't know really why you'd want to do that because then you will see how many things you have that are empty but also because it takes ink and it may make your chart bigger than you really need it to be. One of the things that is kind of nice is to show generation labels. So you can see that these are the parents, grandparents, great grandparents. And I think that's kind of a neat asset to have that on there, especially if you have multiple pages in your book or you know, in your chart that you're gonna to wanna to do. So I'm actually gonna change this to 10. And when I do, it's gonna be 12 pages. But notice that it tells you what page the Lawless Pair of Shows is going to appear on for the rest of the family. Same thing for Sarah and each of the others except for her, and I don't have her parents yet. I have tried, but the people I thought proved not correct. So that's the books and all that stuff. Now, that's just in this part right here. That is this first icon, items. No, this is just the default. Items to include, a box comes open. You can put any fact you want to include in the chart over here. I take divider out. The divider is this line right here. So I remove that. But if you click on the green plus, you can add any fact that you have listed. 
you select over here and click X to remove it. You can move the facts up and down. So like if you wanted marriage at the bottom, you highlight it and click the down arrow and move it down. I'm gonna move it back. You have the fact options to include private facts and blank facts. I don't do blank facts. You can tell it to use a short place name if you want to. You can include sources. I wouldn't do that. That adds a lot of pages. And print individual numbers with names. Starting start person is number one. I don't number my people. The nice thing about this is if you click on name, there's a button down here that says name options. You click on it. You can display the last name in all caps. Include the title, a title if they have one, like you've put in doctor or whatever. Use AKA if available. And you can use married names for female. Now, I don't do any of these things. The nice thing is you can tell it what format you want the name in. First, middle, last is the default. But you can do last, first, middle, or just first and last, or initials, or just the last name. This means that first and middle name will show up on one line, and the last name will show up on the next line. So you've got some versatility in the way you want the name to show up. I'm actually going to cl click last, first, middle, and click OK, so when I finish this, you can see how it reformats the um, chart. You can do the same thing with birth options. You can tell it how you want it to be done. Some people, it will be date and place if you so choose, and it will be in before the place unless you don't want it. And then it looks like this. If you have a description, and I think you would want to do this for the burial one, but not birth, but you know, because I think that's where the cemetery name is going to show up, but um, I'm not sure. I don't use description very much. Include only preferred facts, because I'm sure that some of you have a, a conflicts on birth dates. You know, sometimes you have more than one. Um, you can tell it um, to lowercase the option, the uh, lowercase it or upcase it, abbreviate the label or have it the whole label. And if it's, if it's abbreviated, which is why I do, it's a BMD. Or it's, if you don't do that, it will spell out birth, marriage, and death. And that takes up more room when you're talking about trying to squeeze a bunch of stuff in a little bitty spot. You do that for each of the options. That you have. And if you do have a lot of burial places in there, that may be something that you want to add. Um, and there it automatically is going to include description because I think that's where it sticks cemetery information. All right, so I'm going to click OK. It's going to reload and you see how it reformatted the name. Oops, no. I want that. There we go. It reformatted the name. And it did put where she's buried. The next option across this top is your fonts. The name default is Arial. In this case, I don't know if I've tweaked this or not, uh, but you want to make the size bigger than eight. Uh, for charts, I recommend 10 or 11 for the name, because you want that name to be, to pop on you. 
and I usually bold the name. Now, for birth, I don't have a problem with that being smaller. That's not the important detail. When people look at charts, they're really keying in on the name. So each of the areas you need to select and fix the font if you want to change it. So now if I click OK, it changed the size of the font. Note that if you make it bigger, it's going to change some of the names that wound up all on one line too. Is there anything you can do like on under your top one grand, great grandparents see it starts out and you just have dot, dot, dot. It doesn't have all the detail. Where? Uh, the very one shows the adopt Theophilus Pierce right there. See, it says dot, dot, dot. Doesn't have all the information. Yes, it does. I don't see a dot, dot, dot. Born. 2nd November, 1822. Oh, you have to dot, reformat. Dot. This will, th that will be fixed. All right. You, next line is box and um, border and line options. Now this is set up with none. That's why you don't see boxes. But you can put borders on them. And one of the things that I think is fun is for the women let me find the color I like to use. Where did that go? You don't want to go real dark. No fill and um, you can do a shadow, but I don't think you really need to do that. You do not want all the boxes the same size. That will change how this formats. You do have a maximum width and a maximum height to make it work. You can change. I don't like chart borders because when you print, sometimes those borders get cut off or do fun weirdo things. I don't have a background color. You know, you could shade the whole thing if you wanted to as a solid color. Just remember, it's going to take a ton of ink if you do that. You can round the corners. Your, that's, this is all talking about the border. You can double line your boxes, do rounded corners, make them semi-transparent and gradient fill. If you do fill them, you, they, you have some options on how you deal with the color. You have to do this for each one. So like on the mail, I'm going to make their lines a very light blue. The pedigree lines are what connects them. And if you use divider lines, you pick a color. I mean, you can pick any color you want for the male and everything um, and be different on each and every one of them. Unknown dinner, pictures. There's all these different things that you can option. Now, one of the things that is kind of neat is the marked boxes. And I actually do fill them. I make their, their borders black. And then I come down and pick a kind of a ready color. So like, let me find a good one that will show up. Well, I think tomato shows up real good. That's box one. Box two, I'm going to make a blue. And box three, well, that one is the red one. Well, I'm going to make it different. I'm going to make it a green. Anyway, you can label different boxes 
like all your Revolutionary War soldiers, you can mark to say, make this box one, make this box two, or and it will do that color. So like, um, see how it changed some of this when I changed the sizes? This one is formatting funny. Now, when I go to page two, see it all shows, because there's room. Um, to select that box, let me see. Select person. Where is it? Mark selected with one. I'm going to mark, I'm going to select this, then I'm going to come back and select him with marking two. Oh, it changed both of them. Anyway, you can see what, it, you can go through and like, I said all my um, immigration people sometime with one color and all, all my Revolutionary War Patriots another color and World War, War of 1812 another color. So you can see them really well when you do these charts. Um, let me go back. The other things you can say is how to do the generation labels. This one has a light gray, so they kind of pop out. You can do text boxes in charts. I don't do them very often, but sometimes you have to add additional information that you just feel is really important. Like um, I did a chart one time for somebody who's uh, several different people came on the Mayflower and we did do the mark, mark boxes, but some of them came on another ship and we, and in the text box, we noted which color was which ship. So that it was a very visual thing, but you had your key in a text box. Okay. The next one, little icon is header footer. And you can make notes, you can draw a box around the footer, you can color it, you can put it, Created with Family Tree Maker in there. Um, I think that's wasted ink and space on a chart. You can include submitter information. Just make sure you have yours filled out. And include the date of printing and the time of printing. Now, if you save this and send it to, and to, send to a printer to do as one big thing, that's frozen because they cannot change that in um, their print. You want to include page number, chart numbers somewhere in the footer or in the header and tell it where to start. Just, I would put it in the footer because most people aren't looking for it in a header. And once you're through, you click OK. Where uh, do you, Teresa, where do you uh, supply the preparer's name? Up in your file part? Yeah. Um, oh, wait, it's not going to be. They uh, moved it. User information is under tools. So tools, user information. The next one is to insert a text box or an image from media collection or an image from a file or insert a default embellishment. Um, so you can do a lot of different options like insert an embellishment. It's going to, um, well, there's symbols, all these different symbols. You know, if you want to insert the compass, of course, you want to put it somewhere where it will not obscure what you're trying to show. Um, but if you insert, where you go? insert, um, 
borders, those tend to do, do better than to do the borders in the other places. Um, vintage flowers. Family Tree Maker has quite a bit of cool stuff. Oh, these are nice. Um, those are taken from some old catalog of flowers because I, I have seen these in other places. But you know, if you have a World War uh, One person in your chart that you want to signal out, that's a poppy. You could click on it and open it, shrink it to the right, right size, you know, resize it and bring it down and move it beside the person. Let me delete that one. And that would signify that that's who that is. And you might take different flowers to do the same thing for different, to denote different things. And then you'd want to put a text box saying what each of those flowers meant. Anything that makes it pop. And actually I like doing something like that because it, it would make it read much easier. Page setup, which is your next option, is where you set the page size. And uh, for my printer, because I have four drawers, it asks me where I want it to come from. <laughs> um, it will auto select it if I don't tell it otherwise, because I can do tabloid paper and it will know which drawer has tabloid in it. I can do legal and it knows that. The thing is, is with letter, I actually have two drawers of letters for letter size. One is pre-drilled with holes in it. And if I'm going to do something for a family reunion, I will print it on a pre-drilled paper and stick it in a notebook. That way I don't have to spend time putting it in sleeves or punching a ton of holes. It's usually portrait, but you may find landscape will work better. First, it depends on your tree. And then you set your margins. Be aware that your printer does have its criteria for what it will allow to be margins or not. There are some printers that will print the total page in ink, but most of them will not do that. And you need to be aware of what your printer will or will not do. So like if you make this two, point two, it may cut off stuff. So just be aware of that. I'm going to change this to landscape to see how it changes this format when I click OK. It did move that, but of course it would. Was All right, let me, well, oh. And now that, see, it changed how much it can fit here. And what you can't see that this little blurb is, I find signatures of people, and that's his signature from some document, just like that one is. Uh, and use it, if I don't have a picture of them, that's what I do. I put, if I can find a signature, I stick it in there in their picture slot. And there's two. And of course, this is where it stops. I'm hoping, this is a tree I am currently re-entering everybody on and cleaning up. Um, and I'm hoping in the process of being able to break this brick wall. I have already taken this guy back two more generations and I've taken her back too also. Um, I didn't mean to do that, but I started looking and I found. So I went on and took the and did the information. Oh, wrong. Go back over here. Um, every time you do something, it will change um, the way it will ref it will regenerate the chart. This one is to save the full, save your or create a new template. And you can save it as the preferred template, which means it will hold all the settings that you just did. 
I'm not doing that because I don't want to save these settings because um, I need to tweak it. Um, and then you can save this particular chart as it is. So I am going to save that so I can show you where it goes. Probably need to do it again anyway. Um, I'm going to show you where this chart went so you will know. So I'm going to come over here and under save charts, there it is. I can click on it and it will load and there it is. I need to resave it. Yes. Um, so you can see how that works. And the reason you want to go on, and, well, I'm not going to save the template, but one of the reasons you want to do that is when you, and if you do a book, it needs to be a safe chart so that it's easier to find. And I would always do your criteria here and not in doing the book. Because once you get into doing the actual book and doing all the insertions and stuff, trying to deal with fixing the chart, somehow you get lost and it's just easier to do if you have one that you've got a template for and it's your or your, you use your preferred template. Um, the preferred template probably isn't gonna have this image right here because this is specific to this person. Um, if that makes any sense. But let's see, go back over here. I don't know if I, no, I don't. I don't have any books in here because this is a book format. Um, they have a thing that you can do online. I don't know if this is really current or not because I think, I thought they had done away with that access to doing books online. But to do a, a book, you don't have this in here. First, you have to give it a name. And then you add different things to it. Now, one of the things that I do, because it will open in basically an editor, um, and it works just like Word, so you can do it um, control alt and it selects everything. I do not like Times Roman. I like doing my titles in Tahoma. Um, I always put in compiled by. I don't ever put just by, um, because compile implies that other people helped and other people do help. And you don't want to take all the credit because very rarely do you do everything by yourself. Um, I know I didn't do this by myself. I had a bunch of cousins and uh, or a bunch of my husband's cousins and um, my mother-in-law's siblings and her and um, first cousins and aunts and uncles and all sorts of people help with this tree. So you don't ever do a tree in a vacuum. That's why I always put the word compiled by in here. And once you change anything, you wanna make sure and save it. Now, one of the things, um, you have some title page options here Uh, it says you can include with all these things, include title, include photo. This is in the personal biography, I guess, notes, fields, facts, and sources. I don't know that I would fill this out. The book itself, you can insert any piece of media you want to uh, and drop and drag it over here. And um, so like I can take this picture, which I think is a hoot, um, and drop and drag it over here. Uh, file not found yet because I moved it. Um, I moved a lot of these pictures already because I'm starting to, this is the tree that I'm working on, um, that you can move and put a picture over here. Um, but anything you want to insert after the title page, you hit the plus sign and a window opens and lets you 
add stuff that you want to add. And the first things you want to add are under other. Because you want to include a table of contents. And it will add to it by itself. And you can fix the font here. And here again, I will say use 10 or 11. Eight is really small. Then you want to add another plus of other, you can do what is called a placeholder, which is a page that you can put all pictures in or something and you can format it any way you want. Just be aware that it will not show up in your index. You have no way of getting it in there. And you can tell it you might want five pages there if you figure out that you have a bunch of of certain pictures or a map of where the people lived or wherever or you know of the general vicinity you could add all that into this placeholder but you have to manually add that in and now it comes along and you want to add your pedigree chart and it went back to my default however I wonder if it would let me, let me X this. Cancel. If it would let me go to a save chart, select this one and insert it. And it did. So it inserted that chart for me. Now I want to add an index. So I'll go to other and there's index. And why isn't it previewing? Oh, it is, it was thinking. You have fonts that you can fix and there again, like I said, I like um, titles in um, Tahoma and I like bodies in Arial. And this is an index, it's okay for it to be a little bit smaller, but I would only go 10 is the smallest because um, when you get down to eight and nine, it's hard to read when it's printed. It's thinking, it's gonna change because I did it. But one of the things is, is it, is it is indexing everybody that's in this chart. And if this was a huge chart, it would be nice to have it to be able to find people in it. The table of contents should auto generate here in a minute. And it tells you there's a pedigree chart and an index and a placeholder that's one page long. Now you can go in and edit this. I think you're supposed to be able to. Somehow you can name that placeholder and tell it what it is. So like if it's a map where the majority of them lived or were born or whatever, you can put that in there. Or if it's just a family photo that you want to include in the book. But you can't repagate that. Once you've got it, you've got it. Are there any questions about pedigree charts? I'm going to stop sharing this. And when you, this is Catherine, when you added the end. This has been a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. If you're already a member, thank you. If you're not a member, please consider joining now by going to DallasGenealogy.com and clicking on the membership tab. Your membership dues will help us support the genealogy section of the Dallas Public Library and it will allow us to continue our education and preservation efforts.